So this will be a quick tour of my solar system that I have currently in my backyard in Boise, but we'll hopefully be moving this up uh, to our property in northern Idaho this summer, which will be completely off-grid. The system is made of 16 390-watt Hylene panels. Each one of the panels uh, has an open circuit voltage of about 50 volts at 10 amps, and that's important because if you add those up, 50 volts times 16, where well, you have like 800 volts. Well, my charge controllers can only take 250 volts. Anything more than that can potentially damage them. So what I have done to uh, alleviate that problem is the 16 panels are actually split into two arrays, and each of those arrays has two strings of four um, that are then parallel together. So if you have the four panels uh, put together, Four times 50 is about 200 volts now that can be higher than that so but that still allows me a little bit of of a safety safety buffer zone there so each one of those strings 200 volts at 10 amps uh, so two strings in parallel is 200 volts at 20 amps and so then i still have to have two charge controllers which i'll show you later but uh anyway so these panels are i built these frames which i put probably way too much effort into them but they're uh, just two by two in plywood with some unistrut that goes across them, tying it all together, and then the panels are mounted that. Now I put them at a 45 degree angle because um, uh, in the winter months at our latitude here in Boise, winter months panels should be at about, you know, optimize at about 22 degrees to get maximized sun sunlight on them, and winter at about 70 degree or yeah, 66. So split that difference and it's about 45 which you know as it turns out it's just much more convenient uh, for mitering cuts at 45 degrees anyway so that worked out well um, I do have it all tied again with tied to the ground a little bit with these cables and there's a few other type of, of uh, securing measures I've taken just in case we get a strong wind keep it from blowing over um, hey so another nice thing about the Unistrut is it works for really nice wire chase to run all the wires in except for my copper grounding wire there but all those uh, uh, two arrays, uh, two strings, all the panels, uh, all come into this combiner box. And let me show you inside of it. The combiner box has fuses for each uh, panel, or actually for each string, I should say. And so for the four strings, uh, has fuses for them and then a circuit breaker for the whole thing, as well as a surge protector and is all grounded together. Um, and then feeds in this green wire along with uh, all of the output wires that go into this conduit into the house. Now I do have uh, all the wire from the panels is 10 gauge and then the, the combined uh, circuitry is going out on these six gauge wires. And I probably could have gotten away with uh, 10 gauge going all the way to the house and I certainly could have got away with eight gauge, um, but I went with six just to minimize voltage drop uh, the longer uh, the cable, the more voltage you drop, and there's this thing called the 2% the rule. You don't want to lose more than 2% of your voltage. I think that's probably made up more when panels are more expensive. But um, anyway, I, I just went as, uh, just because my nature, I went with the 6 gauge wire, and which is a bit more expensive, but on the positive upbeat side of it, my voltage drop is actually immeasurable. For a battery bank, I have eight 200 amp hour lithium batteries, which are kept in the house where it's a little warmer. The lithium batteries don't like the cold. In fact, you can destroy them if you try to charge them when it's below freezing. So they're kept inside. And so the eight batteries I have grouped into two sets of four. Uh, each four are in series together and then parallels with the other uh, four. And then run through a couple of, you can see back in this wiry mess, couple of bus bars and then into the garage to the charge controllers and inverter uh, with one out wire. Uh, that's the nice thing about the 48 volt system is you run a little bit thinner wire. In my 12 volt system I have in the van, I ended up going to 4 out wire with it because the 1 out was just, it just was getting too hot uh, running some of the higher amperage stuff. So uh, with these I'd be running, you know, full 6,000 watts and you come in and fill the cables and they're just normal room temperature. It doesn't phase them at all. Uh, the other feature in here besides I have another uh, cutoff switch and a breaker here is this shunt here which is made by Victron and it has a little display which is meant to be mounted inside a wall which it will once we get up uh, up to northern Idaho. 
But this shunt is, uh, along with the two charge controllers that I have are also Victron, um, they are all uh, networked together through Bluetooth and I can control them either with this display or display on the charge controllers um, or via Bluetooth on cell phone, which is kind of, again, a really nice feature to be able to fine tune the system and monitor it uh, as need be from the convenience of a cell phone. So kind of a kind of a cool feature there, I think, as well. And here are the two Victron charge controllers. Again, they are 250 volt max, and then they can uh, put out 100 amps uh, to the either the inverter, which is right here, or to the batteries. Um, and this inverter, uh, like I said, is 6,000 watts, and we've tripped it a couple times with uh, putting just a little bit too much wattage through it. I uh, kind of wish we had a little bit bigger of one, but we'll make do with it for now and uh, maybe you know get another one to parallel with it or run a whole separate system. Uh, again, a couple of power cutoff switches here and my bus bars uh, connecting the whole system together. Uh, and I think as I showed before, the, the, you have the six gauge wires coming out from the solar array from the uh, combiner box and then the heavier one gauge going actually to the batteries. Down here below, I do have a, you know, the batteries ever get too uh, low and they're not getting, getting enough sunshine. I can plug in a generator there to uh, power both the house and recharge the batteries via the inverter. Actually, this is an inverter charger. Um, so, um, haven't had to do that yet, but, uh, um, you know, it's nice to have that as a backup if, if you need it. One last thing that's worth probably pointing out is the transfer uh, box here, which is wired up to our uh, sub panel in the house. And and we can either run, uh, we are right now, what says generator, but that's actually the, uh, the solar array or line, which would be Idaho Power, um, or off in the middle. But So these six circuits are being run on the solar, and these two here are put together for 220 volt, which is just our well pump, and the other four uh, run most of the lighting throughout the house as well as uh, kitchen appliances, the refrigerator, microwave, toaster oven, coffee maker, hot plate, that kind of kind of thing. The only thing we're really not able to power is the big one is our heat pump and then a uh, hot tub uh, and our hot water heater. Other than that, uh, our solar right now is covering most all of our needs. In fact, during the day on a sunny day, uh, we're able to put in, run three electric space heaters, which all three combined put out eh, about 4,500 watts, uh, or use about 4,500 watts. And that keeps us from having to use the more uh, power hungry uh, heat pump. So, uh, but again, you got to have a nice sunny day. And that's, that's kind of the downside. Anyway, that's kind of the tour.